In this ZBrush tutorial, I'm going to go over how to control your topology a bit with ZRemesher, and also how to use UV Master and reproject details from your sculpted model onto the new retopologized model. So we're going to use the ZRemesher guide brush. I'm just going to start drawing some lines basically creating guides which will help to tell ZRemesher how I want the polygons to flow on this model. So the ideal way to retopologize especially a character model would be to use other retopologizing tools where you would actually draw each of the faces from scratch but this is kind of a quick way to take advantage of ZRemesher, which can automatically create pretty good topology for you. And this gives you a way to control it a little bit. So as you can see, I'm just drawing lines around where I want the polygons to flow on this character's face. Now, if I want to get rid of a line, I can just press Alt and with the guide tool just drag across one of the guides I've already created and that will erase it. And you don't have to draw each and every line in. The whole point of this is just to draw a few lines that will help you to control the automatic process of Ziri Mesher just a little bit. So if you use ZRemesher and you don't like the results that you got, you can always go back to your original model and draw some guides to help ZRemesher to better create the topology that you want. So now that I've created the guides, I'll go ahead and click on ZRemesher. And you can see I've set it to use the guides. And there you go have a much cleaner topology, meaning a much cleaner arrangement of the polygons of my model based on the guides that I drew. Now I want to take all those high resolution details that I had sculpted and bring them onto this model. So I'm going to load the high res version of this head. So I loaded that Z tool in. And next, I'm under Subtools, I'm going to click Append. And append the high res Z tool. So just to keep things organized, I'm going to rename the Z remeshed model as new topology. Otherwise, when you look at the thumbnails, it can get kind of confusing as to which is which. So the next step is to reproject the details from the high res model to my new Z remeshed model. So because I have four subdivision levels on the high-res model, I'm going to subdivide one layer at a time on the Z-Remeshed model. Then I'll click on Project All. With the Z-Remeshed model selected under Subtool, After that, I'll select the high res model in, as a subtool, go into geometry, change the slider for the subdivision levels to the next one, which is 2. Go back to my Z remesh model and their subtools, subdivide it so it's also at level 2, and then click Project All again. So 
it's a little tedious, but we'll go layer by layer of subdivisions so that we can keep as much of the detail as possible. Once you've gone through each of the subdivision levels, your Z remesh model will now have subdivisions and all those details that you sculpted. So after reprojecting all the layers, I can delete the original sculpted model and I just have my Z remeshed model with four subdivision layers and all that high-res detail. So I'll go ahead and save that as another subtool. Now the next step is to create UVs so that we can later paint textures onto this model. I'm going to use UV Master and first I'm going to paint a control map. This will help this automatic UV creation process in ZBrush and give me a little bit more control over where the seams are. So bring the subdivision levels all the way down. Then the symmetry on. And I want to enable control maps. So it's telling me that you need to work on a clone of your model. So let's go ahead and do that. There's an option here, just work on clone, so it creates a copy of your model without the subdivision levels. This is why it's important to save the subtools so that you don't have to worry about losing all of your work. So that's why we saved that Z tool earlier. Okay, so let's paint our control map. So enable control painting. Then I'll click on protect. And it'll use the red color. So we're gonna change our brush back to the standard brush and unclick Z add because we don't want to sculpt on the model and we're going to click on RGB because we want to paint RGB colors. So I'm going to paint red in the area that I want to protect where I don't want seams to be created by UV master. So I don't want the model to be split open in the middle of the face. So I've painted all of that area red. Now I'll go to Attract. This will tell UV Master where I want seams to be created. So I want the seam to be in the back of the head. So I'll paint in the back. Now I've painted too far on the top of the head. So you can go in and choose Erase and erase those parts that you don't want. There you go. So now I'm encouraging UV Master to create a seam in the back of the head and not in the front. Once I've done that, I can click on Unwrap so now my model has UVs, but this is a copy that we're working on. So let's click on Copy UVs, then go and load the Z tool that we saved of our model earlier. So now that I have that in here with the subdivisions, I can go back to UV Master and paste UVs. So now I have automatically generated UVs on my model. Now I want to take this model into my 3D animation package for further work. So you can use GoZ to do that, but you do have to set it up first under Preferences. So for that, just click on the Preferences menu, then click on GoZ. 
and you have these options here. You can force reinstall, which would install the plugins. You can tell it where 3D Studio Max lives. So in this case, it searched for it. It found two versions. So I'll go ahead and browse and then find the exe file that launches 3D Studio Max. So you can do the same for Maya or any of the other packages that are listed. If you don't have Gozi set up, it's very easy to just export an OBJ model. And then you can import that into whatever animation program you want to use. But Gozi just kind of simplifies the process of taking your model from ZBrush to your 3D animation program. So your animation package will load with the model. And now you can check your UVs. So in this case, I just put an unwrap UVW modifier on it and then clicked on open UV editor. And you can see how painting that control map helped me to get the seams in the back of the head. Now these are not perfect UVs. This may be good enough if you don't have to paint a lot of detail. But if you need better UVs than this, you can split the model even further and work with it in your 3D animation package to create more detailed UVs. So like the back of the ears could be separated so that you can paint more detail on that. It just depends on what you need. Now I'm going to make some changes to my model in the 3D animation package and then show you how to take that back into ZBrush and reproject the details from your higher res model back onto it. This is similar to how we reprojected detail after Z remeshing our model. Now I'll just use GoZ to send this model back to ZBrush. And you'll see that the top it's telling me that the topology has changed. So I'll say yes, transfer the mesh details. And you'll see that it transferred them, but it's a bit messy. So it did its best to take the details that I'd sculpted and put them on this model that I've now changed. So now we're going to clean this model up, go to the lowest subdivision level, And using the smooth brush, just to smooth out some of those rough edges. Then we'll go to the next subdivision level and do the same. So you always want to work from the lowest subdivision level and then go to the higher subdivision levels. It's the cleanest way to make changes. So ideally, you're not going to make changes like this to the model after Z remeshing. But sometimes you do have to make small changes. And if you don't want to redo your Z remeshing, retopology, UVs, and all of that, this is a way that you can make some changes and then do some cleanup and try to retain your sculpted details. So that brings us to the end of this lesson. Hope you found it useful. Feel free to ask questions in the comments or request other lessons. And if you found it useful, click on subscribe. Thank you.